Hey, what's up guys? And thanks for tuning in to another episode of Shop Talk. Before we get started, I'll pick a winner. I just want to let you know how I pick winners. This is newer because there's so many names now, I can't cut them all out. What I'm doing is picking three runners up, I guess, with the randomizer. That's where the computer picks them. Then I take the three, crumple them up into a ball like this, and then pick one of these balls out. And I'll uh, unwrap it and tell you who the winner is. Okay, this is Gerald Bishop. Gerald, you are the winner of one of my barn prints. The Mountain Khakis Rainbow Trout Belt and the Tack Life Moisture Meter. So send me your address. You can email me at john at johnpeters.com and I'll send this right out to you. Usually I ship everything on Tuesdays. Uh, so let me tell you about what's next week. Uh, this is a skateboard that I made. On the show here, I was showing people how to do wood graining. So there is a video for this, and I'll put a link in the description of this video. And uh, just leave any comment, and I'll pick a random comment like I did this week. And that winner will get this skateboard. Okay, so let's go over a couple of questions about the kitchen build. I should preface this that I don't build kitchens all the time. And this is the first time that I've used drawer slides in probably 15 years. So I'm, not, I'm no expert on it. In fact, I kind of have to go to school on things like this before I start them. Uh, so how did I come up with the length of the, uh, the drawer slide? I just kind of winged it. I ended up buying the 20 inch long drawer slides. The drawers are 22 inches deep and that seems to work pretty well. Um, Next time I might put a little more research into it, maybe I'll go with the 22s. But I think the, the entire cabinet is only 23, three inches deep. The countertop is a 25. Uh, so I think the whole counter, the whole cabinet is only 23 inches deep. So that, that's what uh, seemed to work for me. Another question was, why did I align the sides of the cabinet flush with the inside of the fr face frame. And I did that because usually the sides are offset a half of an inch, which means you need to use a half inch spacer to mount your drawer slides. And I thought I could skip that step. That being said, by screwing through the sides using the um, pocket hole screws, you're not really catching a lot of meat if you think about it because you're only dealing with maybe a half of an inch there where the the screws coming in so i didn't have a problem but you could see how maybe the wood would split so that's something to consider um, another thought is if i ran the screws the other way then they would be going towards more of the meat of the face frame and again you really don't have to worry about seeing the inside of the cabinet because the cabinet has drawers and you're never going to see where those those pocket holes are. So that's um, something to consider. Another question is, why did I use biscuits when I joined the bottom of the cabinet? And why didn't I use pocket hole screws? And that's a good question. I, I could have used pocket hole screws. I, maybe I just didn't think of it at the time. The biscuits work. I've, I've built pieces of furniture using biscuits like that before. Uh, you could use a domino, I guess, too. I don't own a domino machine that seems to be a tool that looks really useful maybe i'll spend the money and get one of those one day um, but yeah you could use pocket hole screws you could use the biscuits the face frame was only an inch and a quarter uh, sometimes i'll put a cleat on the other side of the face frame and then you can nail right into that cleat but i really didn't have enough room there because then the cleat would only be a half of an inch and that's just kind of a little bit small uh, a couple of questions about the hot glue. Some people are a little skeptical about the hot glue actually adding strength. I don't know. The hot glue that I have has a lot of uh, a lot of strength to it. And if you think of when you're building something, it's not just the strength of one joint. It's those joints all together. And so when you've got the drawer screwed together, then you've got the glue joint at the groove in the front. It's tacked in the back. And then you run that bead of hot glue all the way around. It's like putting sheathing on a roof, I feel. And it just kind of locks everything in and putting that little bead along the, uh, the back edge. I don't think it can hurt. And I, I do think it adds some strength. 
So that's, that's, you know, and that's something that I learned at the woodworker where I worked years and years ago. If you tuned into the interview with Bob, we looked at a drawer and sure enough, he had that bead of hot glue around the bottom of the drawer. So it's one of those uh, old trick things or, you know, why side mount versus under mount? I think the under mounts are a little bit more complicated. Uh, but again, I have to refer to the fact that I'm not that familiar with any of these drawer slide um, mechanisms. And this is the first time I've used them in a very long time. And I am kind of still old school. I do like, I often like drawers without any slides, just wood on wood, wax it up. And uh, the drawers seem to work pretty well. Uh, if you saw the image of the Vermont kitchen that I renovated all those years ago, all those were, I think those drawers were made out of pine. I didn't make the drawers, I just refinished everything. And it was a simple face frame and then there were runners for the drawers, but there were no metal mechanisms. It was just wood on wood. And those drawers ran so smooth and the stop for the drawer is just the drawer front. And um, so that's something to consider too. Maybe you don't want to use drawer slides. If you, if you fit the drawer well, like the drawer on my um, radial alarm, not my radial alarm saw, but my little green Hitachi chop saw, that drawer works so nice. It just has such a nice feel to it. And none of these are on slides either. I didn't put any wax on these, but they open and close pretty nicely. So that's something to think about. A couple of things that I thought I would talk about. Um, I did refinish the aluminum cube. I made a short video about that and that's gonna be posted on my main channel probably tonight. I have to do a little bit of voiceover, but I'm gonna try to get that video on the channel tonight. Uh, for Saturday, I won't be installing this cabinet until Saturday, so I'll probably post the installation of the pantry cabinet next Saturday because I still have a lot of editing to do and I still have to do the installation. And, and that's always a little bit of a gray area. That could go really smooth or it could take me longer than, than I think. The, um, the one thing about doing installations is not only do you have to bring the cabinet to the, the job, in this case it's my mom's house, but you also have to bring all the tools that you probably need. And often you forget a tool and you know, that's one of those things where uh, something that should only take a couple of hours can maybe take a day or two. So we'll see how that goes. But that video definitely will go up a week from Saturday. That gives me a lot of time to, to get everything done. And then I'll be working on the countertop for the same project. For this Saturday, I'm going to post a video where I refinish a desk that I made about 17 years ago. It's a solid Babinga desk made with hand cut dovetails. I'm not so much refinishing it, but refreshing it with a few new coats of water locks. And then we're going to take a look at the room because this is the sunroom that I renovated last year. So we'll look at some of the work that was done during that renovation. And then all the pieces that I made in that room that I think basically complete the room. Because when I'm making furniture and making artwork, I'm always thinking about the room as a whole, not just the individual pro project, but how that uh, painting or whatever it happens to be, a uh, piece of furniture is going to look in the room. It's almost like an interior designer. I don't consider myself an interior designer, but I do like everything to sort of work. Also in that room is a new wall mounted electric fireplace. And I did a video for Touchstone Home Products and this was kind of cool because I was sort of the personality for their product. I uh, installed it and I did a video of how to install it and then sent that to them and then that will live on their channel and their Facebook and be kind of an instructional guide for anybody buying the product instead of going and um, reading the instructions which so many people don't want to do, they'll be able to just um, look at this video. So that's kind of a neat thing. I do like the fireplace. It's, it's really cool. It's got a very modern look to it. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about, which has nothing to do with woodworking, but I just saw a great show and I thought I'd pass it on. It's called Godless. It's on Netflix. It's a really neat Western starring Jeff Daniels, who is an amazing actor and really a, a very good musician. If you didn't know that, he's really a, 
Um, he's a very talented guy. Uh, so anyway, I just came across this series. It's a seven-part series. It's shot really beautifully. The story's cool. And then, uh, if you've ever listened to the radio show called Fresh Air, I like to listen to things like that when I'm painting. I was painting the cabinet. And um, Terry Gross is a great interview. And she interviewed the writer and director of that series. And it kind of opened my eyes up to how the guy saw the story and created it. And um, it's, a, it's an interview worth listening to. If you have that kind of work that's kind of quiet, but it takes a lot of time, you can listen to a good interview. I, I recommend that too. And I'll have a link to the interview in the description. So that's what's going on. And um, I guess that's it. As always, thanks for tuning in. And I'll see you next time.